Welcome to the Existential Empath Podcast. My name is Tanya and I am an intuitive empath. My intention is to share valuable tips, tools, and techniques that I have learned so you can tap into your own inner healer naturally and intuitively. Welcome back, everyone. Today I have guest Corinne Kamara. She is a licensed acupuncturist and founder of Corinna, a lifestyle brand whose mission is to help women celebrate aging through beauty, style, and wellness. For more than 12 years, Corinne has treated health issues ranging from digestive disorders, migraines, immune and emotional distress, and even pregnancy. As a lifestyle expert, Corinne applies energetic and spiritual principles to practice science, providing a truly holistic experience for her clients. Welcome, Corinne. It's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. So you and I, we're going to talk about ancient medicine for modern healing. We're going to talk about the benefits <laughs> of acupuncture. And so I have to admit, I have done my fair share of holistic treatments from visceral manipulation to cupping to cryotherapy, but I have never been to an acupuncturist before. And I am an EFT tapping practitioner, so which is considered needleless acupuncture. And so I am educated somewhat on the acupuncture pressure points, but I'm really excited to learn more today about this healing modality. So Corinne, let's dive right in. What is acupuncture? Well, acupuncture is an ancient medicine that comes from China. So it's a, it's part of a system of Chinese medicine and acupuncture is one branch. So there's herbs, there's Twina, which is a massage, there's Qigong, which is movement, and then there's nutrition. So all of those all of those branches equals Chinese medicine which is a philosophy around balance and and finding homeostasis in the body and a lot of it is based on nature and going with the flows of nature and how we are a reflection of our outside world. And so the principles of acupuncture is really about creating harmony in the body and helping your body remove obstructions. And the way that obstructions look like in the body is pain. For most people, they're coming to an acupuncturist because they have physical pain, emotional pain, distress, all of these things, and acupuncture helps to resolve. And so the way that it works is that the needles or the acupressure points are located on particular fascia lines within the body and the needles are going into specific points that have more electricity than other parts of the body since we are all electrical beings and it's we use metals because they're the conductor of heat and electricity so by inserting needles metal needles in the body the body starts to activate its own electricity charge which the fascia has a lot of electricity in it and that's why you can treat one part of the body with the other because you're going along these fascia planes and fascia is connective tissue that goes around all the tissues in the body all the muscles mm -hmm. all the nerve endings like every single part of our body and the inside is covered with fascia and they all can they all connect and talk to each other through electrical currents and so one of the things about acupuncture it helps your body harmonize but it also um, boosts up your immune system because you're putting something foreign in the body right so the body's like okay what is this foreign thing and all the blood comes to that point which then carries a lot of oxygen, it carries a lot of nutrients, and that's how your body starts to heal. So it's a really amazing self-healing mechanism where we're putting points where we need, where the acupuncturist that's skilled can feel, okay, these meridians, these channels are in need of extra support. You put the needles there and the body kind of does the rest. And there's multiple meridians in the body, there's 14 main ones, and each one is associated with a different organ, a different emotion, a different pathway. So a lot of the times it's very scientific and in the way if you have a headache, there's certain types of headaches that link to certain types of meridians and it can be said for all disorders of the body. So really it's kind of playing almost like chess where we're putting certain needles to affect a certain change in the body. Oh, that's really interesting. So I always call the fascia the fiber optic network of the body because it really yeah. is. It's it's this mechanism that speaks to us, right? And it's connected to, to pretty much everything within the body. Right. And it's really neat um, 
So when you're doing acupuncture, do you tune into your intuition similar to visceral manipulation? I don't know if you're familiar with visceral manipulation or not, but they usually tune into their intuition and then they um, will use science to figure out, you know, what areas of the body need healing. So, you know, when you're tuning in with acupuncture, how do you know where to put the needles? How are you guided as a practitioner? Well, um, I don't know if all acupuncturists tune into their energy. I think it's um, per acupuncturist that, because some people use acupuncture more like Western medicine, very scientific. Other people are more energetic about it. I am more energetic about it. So how I tune in is really just feeling the person's energetic body and being an intuitive. I just pretty much, I, I, I use a lot of prayer and I use a lot of um, just listening and listening to the person's body and then being guided. So, so there are traditional points where if you have, this is wrong, these are traditional points you can use. I usually put those in if they're, you know, if it works for this person. And then there's always a point or two where I'm just, I just ask the body and I just ask, and I'm like, okay, this point. And sometimes it's very random, the point. Sometimes it has nothing to do with what I would have chosen. In my mind, I would have been like, that's not a point I would have thought of, but sometimes it's the most random point. And then I put it in and the client has a really big reaction. Mm -hmm. Like they'll be like, oh, ah, oh, like I, you know, I really felt that one or something. And it's like, oh, okay, so this is what the, this is what the body really needs. Because honestly, acupuncture, like I said earlier, is really a self-healing mechanism. Like I am helping your body heal. Mm -hmm. So it's really listening to what your body is asking for. And oftentimes when I work with people that work with energy or that are in that mindset, or practitioners, they themselves will be like, hey, I'm feeling this here. Can you put a needle there? You know what I mean? So then we kind of work together to see what best is for the client or the practitioner if I'm working with somebody that's a, a peer. Yeah. And so how many acupressure points are there? There's um, there's a lot. There's 300 and, um, 319 that are like traditional points. So, so there's all the meridians and then there's two extra meridian channels. And so all of those points. But then there's different, um, there's like doc, Dr. Tong, there's, there's um, Korean um, acupuncture that has different points. So there's other systems that have other acupressure points. So it kind of just depends. But the standard is the 319. Interesting. Uh, yeah. I know with the tapping, we use the basics, you know, mostly around yeah. the face and, and then above the, the collarbone and the chest, but you can use the hands and, you know, there's a variety yeah. of them. So it's really interesting to learn, you know, how many there are. And so does it hurt? What are people's reactions when you are putting the needles in them and you hit one of those sweet spots? <laughs> well, you know, in general, acupressure, acupuncture, I mean, you are inserting a needle. So there is a certain level, there is a pricking sensation. For the most part, I wouldn't say that it's painful. But if you're very sensitive, like I use the thinnest needles in the market and I do more of a Japanese style, so that's less painful. But for the most part, the, the good sensations are a dull, achy sensation, movement, like you're feeling almost like electricity, but not nervy, because if it's nervy, that's not a good thing. But you feel this like shoot of energy. Um, that's a good thing. Um, sometimes you feel sensations where there is no needles, which is what, which where is where I'm like, oh my God, it's so magical almost, right? Like I'm putting needles in your arm and you're feeling it in your shoulder, <laughs> right? Because because that means the whole meridian is opening up. And I remember when I was in acupuncture school and I was learning all of this, you know, you're kind of skeptical. You're like, okay, I'm learning about this. Sure. And I got a point on my thumb that's along the lung channel and i literally felt it my whole the whole channel lit up like i felt it in my chest like the whole entire channel that i was learning and i was like oh my god this is so wild and that's when i was like okay i was already a believer but now it's, it's like really cool to be yeah. able to feel things along the channel and i feel like that was done on purpose for me to like be like okay this is what's happening this works. yeah <laughs> right and so people have those if you're really sensitive to energy people can really feel that stuff. And I think even as a practitioner, I think it's important for practitioners to have their energy be clear as well, because it's an energy medicine. So there is a certain level of transference between practitioner and client. Absolutely. And that's so important. And I, I think, you know, me being an energy practitioner as well, it's like, I'm constantly making sure my vessel is clear because I right. want to make sure that, uh, you know, things are flowing through me with ease. And, you know, I had that experience with, um, like I said, I haven't done acupuncture before, but I went to a reflexologist and they did a foot massage on me mm -hmm. and whoa, it's amazing. I love that. I want to talk about the meridians and the channels yeah. because 
we you've mentioned the word meridian a few times and for us working in the energy field that's a very common right term for us but for those listening this may be a new term for them so let's talk a little bit about what is a meridian and how are those acupressure points you know aligned in our energetic field yeah well the a meridian org channel they kind of are synonymous are points in the body which are like, I like to think about them like rivers. So there's rivers going along the body and it usually starts from the organ. So if we're talking about the lungs, like I just mentioned, the meridian starts in the, in the lung and then it goes along the chest, down the arm to the thumb where it ends. And so that's a flow of energy coming from the organ system throughout the body. And every system is connected to the next. So the large intestine, the, lung is connected to the large intestine which is the meridian after and then each meridian is connected to each other and they're their own systems where so what how it works is really energy going from one place to the other along these fascia these fascia pathways and where you find pain is where like for instance a very common source of pain is the shoulders right everyone has tight shoulders when they're stressed and that's along the gallbladder meridian, small intestine, large intestine. These are meridians that go through the shoulders, right? So then you can start to see, oh, okay, like these meridians, like the gallbladder, which is probably one of the most common areas that people find pain, because this meridian has a lot to do with frustration, stress, <laughs> anxiety, bitterness, like lack of courage, all of these things. And it starts on the outside of the eye, goes along the sides of the body. So oftentimes when people are stressed, this is where they feel pain in their shoulder. And so what I love about the meridians, it kind of gives you a pathway of the body or a directory, so to speak, where you, if people start telling you things that, that's going on in their body, you can start. It's a great starting point, point where you're like, okay, these are the meridians that are affecting this body. Let me check these meridians to see how they're faring. Is, are there tightness? Is there pain on these, along these certain points? And along those meridians, and you can then put acupuncture points to then open it up. And you can also use energy work. You can use massage. There's so many different techniques to open up that energy, to get energy flowing from one place to the other to alleviate the pain or the stress or whatever is whatever's blocking that channel for movement. So it's really just a flow of energy. And I like to use the analogy of rivers because rivers, if rivers are not flowing, if there's rocks and pathways in the river, it's going to create a dam, right? And that dam, then water is not flowing. And then we all know what happens with stagnant water, disease, mosquitoes, it becomes mm -hmm. a dank. That's not a good thing. You want clear flowing water. And so acupuncture is a way to clear those, that, those blockages to create a a free flow of energy throughout the body. With that being said, you have more harmonious ways of being in your body that's more beneficial to your health long term. Absolutely. I, I use that analogy too. I use it, it rivers in a beaver dam. It's like when you have a beaver yeah. dam there, the water is trying to force its way around. It's going right. to sneak its way through there. But you know, once it that clears out, it's, it's just this beautiful, free flowing um, energy that's flowing right. through your body. And so just visualizing uh, that. And so is there a acupressure point that you can share that would help people with say anxiety or stress that's really easy for you know for the viewers I've, I've got listeners too because it's a podcast so we might have to talk mm -hmm. through it but that you could show us that uh, could be helpful mm -hmm. I think the main one is actually something that you use as a tapper is yin tang which is the point in the middle of the forehead mm -hmm. so this is a point that helps to calm the mind, calm the nervous system. So I think that point's really nice. It, it, tapping it or putting essential oils, like I like to put lavender, chamomile, like nice warm, like nice cooling essential oils in between the in between the brows and the forehead is a nice one. Another one that's quite that's also a heart place is in between the chest. We call that Ren 17. It's a point like in between, literally in between your chest. It's like about four inches down. And like that's a great thymus point. Gland, the thymus, that area? Or it's, a, it's a little tiny bit lower than the thymus gland, but it's similar. And it's for the same reason, right? Opening up the chest, opening up your heart. I like that point because it really inspires you to take a deep breath. Because if you're holding your chest, all of a sudden you start to realize, okay, my chest isn't opening. I'm not really breathing. And I feel like that's really important, like creating that breath into your lungs, opening up your chest calming your nervous system down, relaxing the vagus nerve by moving the diaphragm. 
I feel like those are good ways to get into your body and kind of realize, okay, what's happening with me? Take a breath, relax. So those are the two points that I often find to be beneficial for myself. And those, and they're easy enough that I usually tell clients to tap on them or to hold them with some essential oils, or even just putting your hand on your chest and breathing into that point is helpful as well. Yeah, because it's funny how naturally we'll do that, right? If we're stressed, we go like this, we kind of put our hand right. here. So it's like, we know subconsciously that that's a good, or if we're like, Oh, you know, right. I, I need to focus here on this area. So it's funny how we, our body knows what to do and where, where to go. And so just learning yeah. th that those subconscious programs and understanding them on a conscious level, you're like, wow, I can actually yeah. do that. And I thought, you know, when I was learning energy medicine, I, I learned, um, Donna Eden. She's a famous oh, I love her. energy practitioner. Mm -hmm. I love her. And that's where I learned a lot about the meridians, the kidney meridian and whatnot, and how to trace them and, you know, learning about the different points. And so, you know, for those of you out there who are watching or listening, go down that rabbit hole. It's a really fun rabbit hole to go down because there's so much more um, to learn when it comes to our energetic system. And uh, we've only touched on a little bit today, but Friend, you help people with rejuvenating their face, okay, through acupuncture. And this is really exciting. So, which is an ancient tradition to reduce fine lines and wrinkles, right? So, uh, right. for like basically a natural facelift, can you talk a little bit more about the benefits of acupuncture when it comes to um, bringing more vibrancy into our face? <laughs> yeah. Well, the reason why I love it is, I mean, for the anti-aging stuff, that's one thing, but for the most, for really the most important thing about facial rejuvenation is releasing the emotional stress that we are holding in our face. Because the face is a place where we hold a lot of tension, we hold a lot of emotion. And so I feel like softening those that those lines and relaxing the jaw, relaxing the face, creating more of a softness in your face gives you that radiant glow. And of course, built, bringing more blood to the face, bringing more oxygen to the face, putting serums and doing all these things that help, you know, nourish the cells of your skin also gives you that glow, but most importantly, it's releasing whatever we're holding. And we're all holding something in our jaw, in our forehead, in between our brows, in our eyes. It's all this pain that we've carried year after year after year, the stresses, the losses, the grief, the betrayals, all of these things live in our face. And that becomes more apparent as we get older, mm -hmm. right? When you look at older people, you can almost see their their life on their face. Yeah, their, their frown right? lines and yeah. Right, right. And so working, I feel like working with me or someone that does work that I do similar is about really getting in touch with who you are, getting that joy back into your face, that lightness, the heart, the love, all of those things come through your face. And usually when we see somebody, no matter how many wrinkles on their face, if they have that lightness of being, we are all like, oh my God, she's radiantly beautiful, even if she has wrinkles everywhere as opposed to someone that has a tight face and isn't really addressing all those things, you can still see the anger and the negative emotion that screams out of their face. So for me, I like acupuncture because I feel like it's a great way to do two things at once. We're releasing the emotional stuff and we're also nourishing the skin and helping the body rebuild cells in a way that's beneficial for graceful aging, as opposed to doing something that's just purely cosmetic, where you're not tapping into the emotional energetic parts of it. Absolutely. I, I, um, I've been doing the, the gua sha for many years. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful. That's great. Mm -hmm. And I've had emotional releases with that before. I didn't realize right. that, you know, just, um, especially up under my eyes and up here and then up, yep. I'll go up, you know, to this area mm -hmm. and I'll find myself yeah. tearing up and just feeling the emotional, uh, release of that. And so Corinne, I've recently learned that there are certain acupressure points to create more collagen. Is this true? Or is this, have you heard of this before? Like these areas? I, you know, I, I thought I'd ask you if, if you are even aware of that. Is that even a thing? <laughs> I mean, I don't, I wouldn't say there's a specific point that, that produces collagen. That's not necessarily, I've, I haven't learned that. Maybe that's something new that I haven't, I haven't been taught that all of the skins on your face produce collagen. It's uh -huh. not one single, one single area. Really, it's about stimulating blood and circulation to the face, and the cells will produce collagen giving the right ingredients. It's like anything else in our body. We give it the right nutrients, the right 
method of use, the body will produce. So we lose collagen as we get older. And of course you can put topical collagen or drink collagen, that's one thing, but really you can, your body can create collagen given the proper nutrients. So that's really what those things are. And also cleaning out your lymphatic system. The reason why gua sha is really nice you're moving the lymph nodes, you're moving the lymph fluid that's in your face and helping it process through your body faster so it's not sitting on your face. So like having a very swollen face or swollen, that's usually your lymphatic system is not draining. So gua sha and acupuncture is great for moving that along. Absolutely. And I noticed too, just doing the, the gua sha and the tapping and acupuncture too, uh, my eyesight started to get better. And I think it's because yes. I was getting a lot of lymphatic clogging around my eyes where my eyelids would start to droop a little bit more and just using exactly. that movement to, to move up through there and releasing some of the tension, you know, he, from here to here. <laughs> mm -hmm, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, these are just simple techniques that, that we can use. And because I know it's um, not, not everybody can get to an acupuncturist every, all the time to have things done, but I want right, to right. talk about how to choose a reliable acupuncturist. You know, can you give some advice for people for like someone like me who I I'm really into, uh, holistic modalities and holistic treatments, but I, I guess maybe the reason why I haven't been to one is because I don't know how to choose one. I don't know how to yeah. find one that's, that's, uh, yeah. reliable. <laughs> where do you, where do you live? I'm in uh, the Pacific Northwest, so um, Eastern Washington, Northern Idaho area. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I would say the number one thing about finding an acupuncturist, I think in more urban environments, there's definitely more, right? So I live in the Bay Area, San Francisco, there's tons. Um, and I would say the biggest thing with finding an acupuncturist is understanding that there's different styles, right? So there's Chinese style, which is the most popular because that's what we are mostly taught. There's Japanese, which is what I mentioned is what I do. There's Korean, there's five elements, there's master tongue. Those are like the five main, main ones. And so I think you have to realize what you're going in for, right? If you're going in for pain, master tongue would be great. And so would Chinese acupuncturists. Um, if you are looking for more spiritual stuff, you know, maybe you want to try five elements. That's way more spiritual. And there's also esoteric acupuncture, also more spiritual. If you're someone that's very sensitive and you don't like pain, I would definitely say find a Japanese acupuncturist because they're the least painful mm -hmm. out the bunch. Um, so those are like techni technical ones that are a little bit different, right? And there's also the balance technique. So there's lots of different styles. So you want to just understand the balance technique is good for pain similar to Master Tong, they came out of the same branch. Um, so those those are one thing. So, and also it's an energetic practice. You've got to remember that's energetic. So if you find an acupuncturist and that you didn't, you weren't vibing, don't give up, find another one because that just might not have, might not have been your vibe, you know? Or and choose a sometimes, different style maybe? Or choose a different style, yeah. And sometimes acupuncturists have a more of a pain, no pain, no gain kind of philosophy. So it's way more intense. And also there's community style acupuncture. So there's acupuncturists all in the same room. They're giving acupuncture to different people in the same room. So there's more boutique style, which is what I have where you're in a private room. I, I do a more spa experience. Not everyone does that. Some people are just a little bit more straightforward. So it really just depends on your vibe and like what you're looking for. Like, I think it's all about personality. So finding someone that you vibe with, that you like, and they're doing stuff that you're interested in. Um, and just keep looking. If you really want this level, this type of healing, I just wouldn't stop at one because I know so many clients that are like, oh, I tried acupuncture a few years ago and I didn't like it. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like the practitioner or whatever, and I didn't go back. But yet they have great benefits from acupuncture. So, and if you don't like needles, which I totally understand, you want to find someone that's more gentle. Like I would say, find the Japanese style because they're more gentle with the needles. And so how often should you go? Like if you decide you want to, is, you know, like me, I get massages you know, once a month, probably. How often should mm -hmm. you go see an acupuncturist when you're moving through treatment? Well, it really depends on what you're going for. If you're going for something acute, then you probably want to go at least once a week until the issue is resolved. If you have more chronic illness, like you have an autoimmune disorder or you're, you have chronic pain or you're something that's more debilitating in your health that you've had for a while, you would probably need to do acupuncture for quite a long time. Not a long time like years, but you would have to go consistently. Like I like to tell people to come consistently once a month for three months, because three months is a great time for your body to rejuvenate all its cells. It's kind of getting to a great baseline. And then from that point on, you come every other week 
for maybe another three to six months. And then after that, it's once a month, once every six weeks as a, as a tune up. Mm-hmm. Right. So the tune ups are important because you want to maintain your health. It's great preventative care. It keeps your immune system strong. So you're not constantly getting sick and deal. And it also is a great stress management. So for somebody that's like you, that's healthy, that doesn't really have any health issues, and you would want to come at least once a month as an upkeep or once every six weeks as an upkeep, just to keep your body strong, just keep your body healthy, that kind of thing. So what are some things that uh, people should do after their treatment? Um, you know, similar to like, say massage, you've got to drink some water and, you know, just Same. relax. Is it very similar? Yeah. You drink water, you relax. You don't want to drink alcohol the first two hours after session. Um, I always like people to have, make sure they have a relaxing after. Like I would, I really prefer if you are coming to me that you're like often going home. That's where I have more clients at night to get a treatment, go home, relax, you know, or if you're, you know what I mean? Cause it's, it's hard to come get acupuncture. You're all relaxed and you gotta go to work and have a stressful yeah. day. It's like, it's almost like counterintuitive. If you have to do that, then, you know, but I would, I always think it's better. You get your treatment, you go home. This is a self-care day. You know what I mean? Your day off, like have it be in a time where you can really just rel- have that relaxation. That you can keep that relaxation for as long as possible. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds amazing. Doing it right before bed. <laughs> right. Hey, you come get acupuncture, you go home, you have dinner, you go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> you get your fit, your natural facelift. You wake up in the morning and you're a new person. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Well, Corinne, can yeah. you share uh, some of the services that you provide with us? <laughs> yeah. So I, I provide traditional acupuncture, which is basically for any kind of chronic pain, anxiety, emotional disorder that you want, like some help around and women's health. So I do a lot of pregnancy, postpartum, that kind of thing, C-section repair, all of those things. And then I have my facial acupuncture. So the facial acupuncture is helping your body have this natural facelift. And I also do micro needling, which kind of also goes with reducing fine lines and wrinkles. We're using a micro pen. And then I also offer intuitive acupuncture sessions where I give you an energetic reading. I do the acupressure points, acupuncture points, and I give you a little bit of what I'm channeling and what I'm feeling is something that would be beneficial to you. And what else do I do? I'm also a personal stylist. So I also help women with their style and helping them kind of get in touch with who they are. And I'm really moving towards um, a transformational coaching with women, helping you get in touch with your heart, getting in touch with who you are, helping your health, getting you into a space where you feel good about yourself and having that creativity manifest in your clothing and your style and your overall environment. So that's really what I'm passionate about is really helping people transform and really celebrate who they are, especially as we get older in our season, in our years, and really wanting to finally become our authentic self. Oh, absolutely. And so, ooh, that intuitive session sounds really neat. So <laughs> yeah. that's for people who are remote, right? So people who don't live in the Bay Area. Yeah, I can do I can do intuitive things remote. Um, and also I do intuitive with acupuncture in person. That's really cool. So where can mm-hmm. people contact with you or where can they connect with you? Do you have a website or how, what's the best yeah. way? My website is Karina.com. So that's C-A-R-R-I-N-N-A. And you can also research, you can also Google my name and you'll find me that way. And yeah, I'm local to the Bay Area. So if people are in, you know, in the Bay Area, they can come see me. If not, I'm, you can find me online too. Great. Well, thank you so much. This has been very educational uh, for me and I know for my listeners and watchers as well. So I appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing all of your knowledge and wisdom about uh, acupuncture, acupressure, and uh, natural facelifts. That was very new to me. I did not realize that uh, that was a thing. And I bet there's a lot of people out there that are like, wow, that's <laughs> a really holistic, natural way to reduce fine lines and wrinkles because that's what we're always looking for, right? Is nice. Absolutely ways to look radiant and vibrant. And so thank you so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate your energy. Thank you so much for having me. You deserve to navigate your life in alignment with health, happiness, and abundance. To learn more about the services that I provide, including Beyond Quantum Healing Hypnosis, EFT Tapping, and the Emotion Code, visit my website, at www.TheExistentialEmpath.com.